Inspector Sanderson, sir. Have him come in. Inspector Sanderson? How do you do, Mr. Mason? How do you do? Come in, won't you? Thank you. Sit down. It's good of you to give me an appointment. I know how busy you are. Oh, it's quite all right, Inspector. What can I do for you? Well, frankly, I've come for help. I'm on an assignment that you know more about than I do. At the Yard, we think there's an organization in the business of furnishing false heirs for unclaimed estates. I've suspected that. At the moment, I'm searching for half a dozen heirs. Cases where records were burned, families broken up by the Blitz. Thousands of pounds are involved, and that's big enough game for any criminal. Exactly. And because there are no records, we suspect... Excuse me. Yes? Miss Ellen Curtis to see you, sir. Ask her to come in, please. No, no, don't go, Inspector. This may interest you. Miss Curtis is the heir to the Cosgrove fortune. Mr. Mason? I'm sorry. I was under the impression that there was a Miss Curtis to see me. But I'm... I mean, that's my name, Ellen Curtis. Your name is Ellen Curtis? Yes. I came in answer to your advertisement. paper is three weeks old. Yes, I know. I just came across it last night quite by accident. You see, I've been living in Paris. I just got back yesterday. I see. Oh, this gentleman is Mr. Sanderson. How'd you do? Sit down, won't you? Thank you. You can prove that your name is Ellen Curtis? Of course. Why? Because Miss Ellen Curtis has already been found, and she proved that she's Ellen Curtis. But that's absurd. So it would seem. May I see your identification? My birth certificate. Very interesting. The other Ellen Curtis also furnished a birth certificate. But she couldn't have. This is mine. I can't dispute you, Miss... Miss Curtis. As a solicitor, it's my duty to investigate all claims. Frankly, the existence of two claimants doesn't surprise me. It's not uncommon when the estate involved is a large one. You are aware that this estate is a large one. Is it? I should think you'd know that. I assume that it's my aunt's, Jane Cosgrove's. It's the only money that could come to me. But I never knew how much she had. Well, perhaps we'd better continue this at another time. I should get in touch at once with Miss... the other Ellen Curtis. A meeting between the two of you seems indicated. I think it's an extremely good idea. Then shall we say here at this uh, same time in my office tomorrow? Tomorrow, then. If anything comes up, Miss Curtis, where can we reach you? At the Royal Arms Hotel. Looks like we've got another case. Now, um, where can I find the other Ellen Curtis? Curtis. Thank you. I really hadn't expected you to be quite so prompt, Miss Curtis. Such short notice. Does anyone ever keep Scotland Yard waiting? Yeah, waiter. I just like coffee, please. Captain Drummond. Hello, Bess. Mr. Longworth arrived yet? Yes, he's over there at the bar. Oh, good. Oh, you don't need a check. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Hugh. Sorry I'm late. Drew an elderly taxi in a cabbie with too much respect for the aged and infirm. Good evening, Captain Drummond. Good evening, Clyde. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. 
usual, please. I'll have the same again. Right, Mr. Longworth. Why, that's Sanderson, isn't it, Algie? Yes. Look what he's with. And by the way, Miss Curtis, did you bring that identification with you? Oh, yes. Yes, it's the birth certificate. Doesn't seem right to snub old Sanderson, does it, Algie? Shouldn't we, uh, join him? By all means. He'd never forgive us if we didn't. Excuse me a moment. Yes. Hello, Sanderson. Uh, I know exactly what you have in mind, Hugh, and the answer is no. You're not going to get an introduction. Well, I merely meant to inquire how things are at the yard, Inspector. You do not get an introduction. This is work. Nice work if you can obtain it. Now, seriously, Hugh, not now. I think I've got hold of a big case. MacGyver's dropping in later. Come by early and I'll, I'll tell you about it. It's rather fascinating stuff. Well, thanks, I will. Yeah, very fascinating. Oh, too bad. But then, for all we know, she may be an axe murderess. I'd take a chance on her. Remember the Gibson case, Algie? Four husbands. <laughs> and that's about all. Thank you very much, Miss Curtis. He looked as though he were following Sanderson. Who? That man. One who was sitting over there. I didn't notice anything. Maybe he's another man from the yard. If he was, he's pretty clever at makeup. Looked like a nasty piece of work to me. Here, yeah, Seymour. Look, sir, my story. They printed it. Here it is, sir. Hmm? Oh. Fireman Rescue Cat. A Persian cat, Methuselah, belonging to Mrs. O.P. Higgins of Crosschester, was rescued today by the volunteer fire company, Squad 7, after efforts to lure him down from a treetop had failed. Made the front page, eh? Fairly. <laughs> Congratulations, Seymour. Well, thank you, sir. I, uh, I brought the car. Oh, good. We're going to call on Inspector Sanderson. Oh, is something up, sir? Well, you never can tell. Thank good night. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, good night gentlemen. Anything wrong, sir? I don't know. The light on. He ought to be home. Well, let's take a look. He's far away from here by now. Locked. Algy, you look around outside. Seymour, you stay right here.
Captain Hugh Drummond. Has Inspector McIver left yet? It's important. I'm calling from Inspector Sanderson's home. He's on his way here. Good. or I'll shoot through the door. Who are you? What are you doing in here? We were talking. Someone shot through the window. Did you see who it was? No, it all happened so fast. Then I must have fainted, and when I came to, I heard someone knocking. I, I was frightened, so I hid in the closet. You're Ellen Curtis. How did you know? I guessed. Inspector had this on his desk. That's not my phone number. What are you doing? Looking for a gun. Well, I told you I... Captain Drummond, a police car just drove up. Bill, arrest me. Please help me. You've got to believe me. I didn't do it. No, I don't think you did. Sanderson, Jim, are you all right? All right, I'll take a chance for the present. Come on. Sanderson. Coming. In the hand, Seymour. You, MacIver. I know, he's about to break the door down. Take it to my apartment and wait for me. Right. All right, Sergeant. Let's get in. killed just before I got here. I came in through there. Why? Why the window? I met him a little time ago at the cotillion room. He said he was working on something and invited me over. Well, I came and found him like that. You said you came in by the window. Why? He didn't answer when I knocked, although the light was on. I saw a man leaving as I drove up. I thought it was rather suspicious, so I came around here. And you let the suspect get away. You forget, at the time, I didn't know he was a suspect. Anything else? Did you have a man tailing Sanderson? No. There was a man in the bar this afternoon. I had a feeling he was following him. Remember what he looked like? Dark, blue-striped suit. Somewhere between a tout and a cheap jewelry salesman. I'd know him. All right, Drummond. Now, will you do me a favor? Go home. Can't I help you? No, that's just exactly what I don't want. He was my friend, too. I know, I know. But this is police work. Now, will you get out of here? Drummond. Come and see me in the morning. All right, Mac. All right, I will. Do you feel better now? Very much, thank you. It was thoughtful of you. Yes, Hugh, now. What happened to you? Anything new, sir? What did MacIver say? Very little. He was too shaken. He was very fond of Jim, you know. So are you, for that matter. You didn't tell them, did you? About you? No. Not yet, anyway. 
I, uh, I think you better tell me all about it. From the beginning. I've been living in Paris. My family was killed in the Blitz. I thought I wanted to get away, but didn't work out somehow. I came back yesterday and found the ad in an old number of the Victoria. Is uh, this it? Yes. And that's my birth certificate. I gave it to Inspector Sanderson just, just before he... Yes, I know. Go on. There's not much else. I called on Mason, the solicitor, and he told me there was another Ellen Curtis claiming my aunt's estate. He seemed to think I was the imposter. I see. Then you uh, called the police. No. Inspector Sanderson was at Mason's office yesterday. He called me later at my hotel and asked me to visit him at his home. The rest you know. What did Sanderson tell you? Nothing. Just asked questions. I don't think he believed me either. So strange. All my life I've been Ellen Curtis and now I find that no one seems to believe me and that I have to prove it. It's all so very... So very disconcerting. One is always so sure that one is oneself, isn't one? What? Oh, never mind. What was your aunt's name? Cosgrove. Jane Cosgrove. Where are you stopping? The Royal Arms. I, uh, don't think it wise for you to go back there. I don't mean to frighten you, but... if Sanderson was killed because of this, and I think he was... you may be in danger, too. You better stay here. Here? Well, it's quite all right. Algae will chaperone us. Yes. What? Oh. Where are your bags? Well, they're checked at the hotel, but I... Well, to give the check to Seymour, he'll pick them up tomorrow. Uh, show Miss Curtis the guest room and get her toothbrush and uh, a pair of my pajamas. I'm afraid I can't argue with such complete hospitality, Captain Drummond. Good night, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. It's this way, Miss Curtis. This is our guest room. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. I'll have to get these to MacIver without his knowing I've had them. After all, we can't withhold evidence. And the Yard's facilities for checking questionable documents are so much better than ours. What are they? Two birth certificates. One for each Ellen Curtis. As soon as they're checked, we'll, uh, we'll know which is which. You, you mean you think she may be lying? But I thought you believed her. You, you asked her to stay. You, you said she was in danger. Well, that's a flaw in my character. I always believe them when they're pretty. <laughs> Besides, if she is lying, we'll be able to keep an eye on her. She is pretty, isn't she, sir? Oh, come now, Seymour. Let's have one level head amongst us. Oh, definitely, Seymour. We depend on you. Tomorrow morning, for example, I want you to get me a copy of the crux of the situation. Jane Cosgrove's will. Where will I get that, sir? All wills are filed with the principal registry in Somerset House on the Strand. You're a reporter, Seymour. You, you'll have to learn these things. Yes, sir. The first thing tomorrow morning. Now what? Now we make a little experiment. Hello. Salon Curtis, please. Who's calling? Captain Hugh Drummond, it's important. Captain Drummond? Just a minute. It's for you, Ellen. Hello? Miss Curtis? It's urgent that I see you as soon as possible. But I, I don't know you, Captain Drummond. Isn't it something you can tell me over the phone? Well, I'm afraid not. It's about your inheritance. Can you meet me tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock in the cotillion room at the Maynard Hotel? You can? Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Curtis. Good night. So there really are two Miss Curtises. So it seems. Sir. He's in a foul temper. He usually is. 
The commissioner's wild. An inspector of the yard murdered. Drummond, the man at the bar, the one might have been following Sanderson. You think it was the same man you saw running away from the house? He wasn't running. Oh, very well then, walking, but was it the same man? I don't know. He might have been. I saw him from a distance. Did Sanderson give you any hint as to what he was working on? Not exactly. He did say something about unclaimed money. Ah, it's a big thing. Since the war, a lot of people have lost touch with their families. There have been more missing persons and missing heirs than ever before. Consequently, there's a lot of unclaimed money lying around. An organized ring seems to be capitalizing on the situation. By furnishing false heirs? That's it. Sanderson was working on several of these cases when he was killed. Now, here are some of the files. Hey. There's the Hunt case. Case of the girl Hamilton, Jennings, and uh, the girl Curtis. You know, this is becoming quite a swindle. Well, how did this get here? What? This envelope. I went through Sanderson's briefcase, and I swear that... Uh, Drummond, is this some of your work? Sorry, Inspector, I don't know what you're talking about. Half an hour ago, this envelope was not in this briefcase. Sergeant, Chubik, this envelope, how did it get into Sanderson's briefcase? I really couldn't say, sir. Now, you were here when I went through Sanderson's things. Was this envelope there then? Well, I don't know, sir. If you recall, I was seated at my own desk at the time. Oh, birth certificates. Oh, uh, Barchester. It had to be a town where the records had been blitzed. You mean you can't check them? Oh, we'll check them all right. But it'll take weeks, and there's no telling what the result will be. Now, listen to me, Drummond. I believe this was your trick, and that's exactly why I cannot let you meddle. I'm a policeman. I work by rules and regulations. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter so much. But Scotland Yard has got to be right every time. Now, you get out of here and don't come back unless I send for you. All right, Inspector, I understand. But if in my irregular way I should happen to stumble on something, I can telephone you, can't I? Uh, yeah. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Where's, uh, where's Seymour and Ellen, then? Oh, he drove her to the hotel to pick up her luggage. Anything in the papers about Sanderson? Uh, not yet. Oh. Seymour got a copy of the will. Yeah, had a complete copy made. I hope you don't mind. I, um, I took a peek. <whistles> 75,000 pounds. So that's what all the sound and fury is about. For that amount of money, I'd um, pretend to be Alan Curtis myself. What I have in mind for you is a little simpler. I'm meeting the other Alan Curtis at two o'clock in the cotillion room. Give me a chance to be alone with her for a second, and then pop in with this Alan. Right. Bringing the two of them together, eh? Should be rather interesting. Then after Miss Curtis leaves, you follow her, understand? No, which Miss Curtis? The second one, of course. First, the second. I'm confused. Our Ellen, the one you know, is the first one. Now, I want you to follow the other one, the one you don't know, the second one. But if I don't know her, how can I follow her? Well, if you knew her, she'd know you, and you couldn't follow her, she'd see you. Follow me? Frankly, no. Well, don't think about it anymore. Just follow the girl. Follow her no matter where she goes or what she does. And then come back and tell me everything you see. Is that clear? Of course. Why didn't you say so the first time? Curtis, 
I'm Hugh Drummond. How do you do? I have a table. Let's sit down so we can talk. Will you have something? No, thank you. I just lunched. It's odd being here with you. I saw you sitting at that table yesterday. I did my best to get Sanderson to introduce me, but he refused to oblige. Now, here we are. Well, that's very flattering, Captain Drummond. But you said you had something important to tell me. What is it? Well, several things. For one, Inspector Sanderson was murdered last night. Murdered? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Didn't you? Just what is your status in this, Captain Drummond? Merely that of an amateur busybody who objects to his friends being killed. Inspector Sanderson's reports, which I have, definitely connect his death with the Cosgrove will. I met Inspector Sanderson yesterday because he asked me to. I know nothing about his murder. Now, is there something else you wanted to say? Or may I go? You can, of course, if you want to, but I would like to hear your side of it. <coughs> Captain Drummond. Miss Curtis, may I present Miss Curtis? Why, you... I suppose you wanted to see how I take this, too. Well, I have no objection to telling you. I do not intend to sit here with this fraud. Oh, please, Miss Curtis. Perhaps Miss Curtis is afraid to stay. I... I Why, do... you... You probably don't even know where the estate you're claiming is. I doubt if you even... What's the name of the next door neighbors? Think, dear. Aunt Jane's neighbors. The people in the White House on the hill. Don't you remember? Oh, of course she doesn't remember. She never knew. She's never been there, and she never had an Aunt Jane. No, really, Captain Drummond. Further no, Marie. ladies, please. It's been very interesting, Captain Drummond. But if you have anything more to say to me, perhaps you'll communicate with my solicitor. <sighs> she made a complete fool out of me. I just couldn't remember. Do you have relatives in the country? You visited them as a child? Why, yes. Do you remember the names of their neighbors? Why, no. As a matter of fact, I don't. Of course you don't. Why should you? But she knows because she has a reason. Because she's... she's rehearsed in case she should be questioned. Because she's an imposter. What are you thinking, Captain Drummond? I was just thinking, when the Chinese write the word for trouble, they draw a picture of a roof with two women under it. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'd better take you home. I was supposed to go to see Mr. Mason. You were? Yes. He was going to arrange a meeting between us, too. Do you think I should keep the appointment? I have a much better idea. I'll keep it for you. Mr. Mason? Captain Drummond. This is an unexpected pleasure. How do you do? Mr. Mason, I understand you represent a Miss Ellen Curtis. Not exactly, Captain Drummond, but I am the executor of the Cosgrove estate. Oh, sorry, I never can get these legal details straight. In any case, you were to arrange a meeting between the rival Miss Curtises. That was my original intention. Are you here in behalf of the new Miss Curtis, the one who came to my office yesterday? Not exactly, Mr. Mason. But that's good enough. Well, then, as you probably know, both girls offered birth certificates as identification. Mm -hmm. It occurred to me that your Miss Curtis, if I may put it that way, that your Miss Curtis should be confronted with my Miss Curtis's proof. And therefore, since you are here in her place... You'd like to confront me with it? Precisely. Oh, Mr. Cosgrove, will you step in a moment, please? Thank you. Captain Drummond, I want you to meet Miss Curtis's uncle, Mr. William Cosgrove. Of course, I've been reading about you, Mr. Cosgrove, in your sister's will. You're the brother she cut off with a shilling. What do you mean, sir? 
My differences with my sister were entirely my own business. My only purpose now is to see that my niece gets her rightful share of the estate. I see. Uh, by the way, what was the name of your sister's neighbors, the, the people on the hill? Why, uh, Roberts, sir. Colonel Jeffrey Roberts. Why? Oh, just idle curiosity. And you're positive Mr. Mason's uh, Miss Curtis is your niece? I have been staying on at the Cosgrove house until the estate is settled. Ellen has been living there with me since she returned from Paris about three weeks ago. I've seen her every day and I've known her all her life. She is definitely my niece. Well then, Captain Drummond, we can regard this as settled. Oh, not quite. Even if Mr. Cosgrove's identification can be accepted as positive, there's still a little matter of a murder. Inspector Sanderson? Yes. How did you know? It's in the evening paper. But I can't see what possible connection that can have with this. On the contrary, Mr. Mason. Sanderson's reports, which I have, indicate a most definite connection. Good day, Mr. Mason. Good day. Mr. Cosgrove. Good day. We'll be in touch again, I'm sure. Oh. Where's everybody? Oh, 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 there you are. Oh, Ellen's inside and Seymour's off somewhere vacating his editor. Boss seems to resent him for spending all his time with us. Well, that's narrow-minded of him. And the uh, other, Miss Curtis? I followed her all the way to Barchester. She didn't stop anywhere on the road. Then she disappeared into a big country house. I inquired in the town, and it's the Jane Cosgrove place. Now inhabited by William Cosgrove, her brother. Yes, I know. I met him this afternoon. He said... I thought I heard you come in. What happened in Mason's office? I was just telling Algie I met your uncle. You do have an uncle, don't you? Yes, Uncle William. What did he say? Well, the fact is, Uncle William says you're a fake, that the other girl's his niece. I was afraid of this. I knew there was something when he wouldn't see me, or speak to me on the phone. He's Jane Cosgrove's brother, all right. All the townspeople know him. But don't you see? They're obviously working together. He's known for years that Aunt Jane would disinherit him. What's that? I don't know. No one must see you here. You too, Algy. Well, this is a surprise, Miss Curtis. Uh, won't you come in? Thank you. I uh, hope you don't mind. Let's um, turn it to the symphony. Good and loud. I mean, I never miss the symphony. Won't you, won't you let me take your wrap? Oh, no, thank you. I can only stay a moment. My uncle and I are going to dinner in the opera with Mr. Mason. Oh. Well, um, can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Or, uh, or a cigarette? Or is there uh, anything else I can do to delay you? Nothing, thank you. Uncle William isn't really a music lover. He'd never forgive me if I left him to suffer alone. It's more difficult than you thought it was going to be, isn't it? You, uh, you came here to tell me something. Now you don't quite know how to begin. Isn't that it? Yes, it is. I was still angry with you when I got home this afternoon. I called Mr. Mason and told him about my meeting with you. And that girl. Yes? He agreed with me that we ought to tell Scotland Yard about it, so we did. At least, Mr. Mason said he was going to call them right away, and I guess he has by now. Why have you come to tell me about this? Well, I thought if they found out you were with that girl, I don't know how you got involved with her, but I do know your reputation. You're not the kind of man who would get mixed up with anything dishonest. You're in this because your friend was killed. I wanted to warn you so that when the police come, you'll be... so you won't get into trouble. Well, thank you. Under the circumstances, that's very decent of you. I really must go now. Well, I, uh, I'm sorry you have to run along. I'm late already. Goodbye, Captain Drummond. Goodbye. Algy? What 
What's she doing? She said she was going to lie down. Got a headache or something. We certainly had an oversupply of discourtesies for a minute. What did the other one want? I wish I knew. On the surface, she was being very nice. Came to warn me that Mason told the yard about her being with me. Whew. We'd better get out of here quick before MacIver arrives. That's just it. Mason told the yard this afternoon. Why hasn't MacIver been here already? There's something very strange about this. Let's see exactly how strange. Calling MacIver? Mm -hmm. Inspector MacIver, please. Uh, Drummond, Inspector, I, uh, I just called to see if you had any luck with those birth certificates. Drummond, if I had learned anything, which I haven't, I would not be telling you. You're not on this case, understand? And you do not get any information. Didn't even mention her. Mason couldn't have called. Maybe he did. MacIver's being subtle. MacIver, subtle? <laughs> If Mason had called, he would have been here hours ago, yelling the place down. No, Mason didn't tell him. I wish I knew the reason why. I wish I knew a lot of things. How can I tell which girl to believe when they both look so good to me? In a case like that, we replaced the emotional with the scientific. I've been scattering hints all day to everyone concerned about important papers. If Sanderson's killers swallow the bait, we may have visitors. outside. All clear. Yes. Sorry, Hewitt. It's my fault. Never mind. One of them was the man we saw following Sanderson. Algy. If you wanted to search this house, would you come in the front door just like that? Because the lights were out and you thought maybe no one was home? And when you had the chance not bother to search? No. There must have been some other reason. Help. She's gone. So that's why they came in the front door. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the yard and tell them the whole story. We've got no right to take chances with her. But MacIver. Well, I suppose you're right. Inspector MacIver, please. This is Drummond again, Inspector. Now, don't get excited. 
I, I've got something to tell you. Here, you look. I'm a busy man and I've no time for you. And for the last time, Robert, drop this case. What was that noise? Oh, uh, nothing, Inspector. I, uh, I just dropped the case. They must have lost it while we were fighting. That's probably where they've taken her. If they lost it. I don't like it. It's too easy, too convenient. Maybe a false lead to get us out of the way. Or even a trap. What are you looking for? Oh, Hotel Ruby, of course. Mm. It's down near the docks. We'll have to chance it. After all, we set a trap for them and got caught in it ourselves. Maybe we can catch them in theirs. Hello. My editor's really mad at me. We'll have to get him a good story this time. Before the night is out, we may have a story that'll have him eating out of your hand. Come on, Seymour. Hotel Ruby, room 203, please. Answer it. Yes? Who? That should take care of one of them. been here? No. All right, let's get out of here. No way. Come on. We'll take him with us. Get going, Seymour. You're not in a conversational mood, eh? The art will loosen him up. Let's give him to McIver. Could be embarrassing unless you told them about her. I don't think so. The inspector will be satisfied to get the man who was following Sanderson the day he was killed. And you won't complicate things by adding kidnapping to the charges now, will you? But Captain Drummond, won't we have to tell them... No, about... you won't. Take him to a hospital and call the yard. Just tell them who he is, that's all. Stand by until they get there and then come back as quick as you can. Got it? Got it. Tell me about it. What happened exactly? I was half asleep. Suddenly there was a man. He had a gun. We went out the back way to a car. Two other men came out then. The ones you saw in the hotel. What became of the third man? Well, he drove the car away when we got there. They took me upstairs. How did they get in the room? With a key. It's funny. I don't usually have two keys to a cheap hotel room. They must have... Well, she did it. I know she did. She must have. She's the one who hired those men, and... I suppose Uncle William's in on it, too. Because they're afraid I'll prove my case. But will you? I... Well, I, I don't understand. Right now, it's your unsupported word against hers and William Cosgrove. But it doesn't have to be. Not if you'll help me. How do you mean? I was frightened when they had me in that room. And it made me remember something. Someone I used to run to whenever I was frightened as a child. Nanny. 
Who's Nanny? An old servant of Aunt Jane's. She'd know me. Well, where is she? I don't know exactly, but I think we could find out. Oh, how? Well, I don't remember her real name or where she lives, but she wrote a little poem for me once. It was in a book of nursery rhymes that Aunt Jane had, and it was about the town she came from. We could find that book. I know we could. If we could get into the Cosgrove house. Of course it would still be there. Oh, of course it would. It must be. Nothing in that house has ever been changed. I'm being stupid, I know, but how would finding the name of a town help you? How would... Oh, but I could find the house. I've been there without Jane. I remember it very clearly. You can see it now. Well, obviously, there's only one thing to do. Go get it. Good. I'll get my things. Go where and get what? Miss Curtis has just recalled an old servant. Nanny by name. The clue to her whereabouts is in a book in the Cosgrove Library. Naturally, we're going out there to get it. But, sir... Naturally. And uh, what are the other Miss Curtis and Cosgrove doing all this time? Applauding the last act of Lohengrin. We should be back here before they leave the opera house. Opera? I see. Do you understand what's going on? Well, of course. We're going to the Cosgrove house to find a book, to find a clue, to find a nanny. See? Oh. over there. Been here five minutes sooner. <laughs> Ellen and I will go in. You two keep watch. They get the car off the road. Right. I am. on the bottom shelf. It was a fairly small book. It isn't here. Hmm. I was certain it would be. understand it. What a shame. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but to go home. <laughs> I was so certain it was here so... Wait a minute. Here it is. Better meddle with old Satan than with the children of Fenkirk. He lives. 
here it is in her own handwriting. I remember it. Better meddle with old Satan than with the children of Fenkirk. We who... We who are born there are of old Satan's children. <laughs> Nanny. Look out. They just came in the front door. Down. I'll leave you to your nightcaps, if you'll excuse me. Good night. Oh, good night. Good night, my dear. Short one for me, please. You couldn't arrange to stay with us a few days longer, could you, Mr. Mason? Thank you very much. I'd love to, Ellen, but I've got to be back in the morning. Well, it's been a lovely evening. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, here's to my niece. May she soon be wealthy. I think to that. Do you care for another? No, thanks. There are a few details we ought to talk over. For example, did Jane Cosgrove hold on to title to the Enfield property? That's what I wanted to discuss with you. It's very important to know whether she did or not. I was afraid they'd see us. break into people's rooms in the middle of the night to help them, Captain Drummond? Well, this is merely a return visit. You came to see me, I come to see you. Now listen to me. Do you know anything about an old nurse who lived at Fenkirk? Of course. Nanny. She was really our cook, but she used to take care of us when... <gasps> who told you? How do you know about her? What's important is that the other Miss Curtis knows. But she couldn't. No one knows. I only told Mr. Mason a few days ago. We were going to call her as a surprise witness. I'm going out to Fenkirk with the other girl now. She says Nanny will be her witness. I want you to come along, too. All right. I'll call my uncle and... No. No, I want you to come alone. Alone? Why? Because I'm asking you to. Because I think it'll be better that way. I'm going to make a telephone call now, and I want you to listen to it. Inspector McIver speaking. What is it? Drummond, Inspector. Now, don't interrupt. Drummond? Now, I warned you. So help me, I'll... You can do that later. Now, this is important. I want you to get your clothes on and come out to Fenkirk. What's the address? It's just Bruxton Way. Bruxton Way. You'll be able to find it. My car will be in front. I'll be waiting for you. Satisfied.
Did you tell anyone about Nanny? No, certainly not. We're saving her as a surprise. Drummond knows. He's on his way to Fenkirk now, with Ellen and that other girl. Ellen? Have you called the police? It isn't necessary. Drummond's already done so. I'll be right with you. Stay here, I'll call you. Who's there? May I come in? I'd like to talk to you. You may not. Talk in the wee small hours of the night, indeed. Now, now take yourself off like a decent young man and... And go to your bed. That's important, Nanny. Got a problem for you, Nanny. There are two young ladies outside, and they both say they're Ellen Curtis. I want you to tell me which is the real one. Ah, oh, guessing games, is it? I'll bring them in. I haven't set eyes on the child in ten years, but I'd know I like me own. All right, Algie. Ellen. Ellen. It's been such a long time, child, but, but you haven't changed at all. You look just the same yourself, Nanny. Oh. Is she the real Nanny? I wish she weren't, but she is all right. I, I don't understand it. I think I do. But what to do about it? Captain Drummond, two men just drove up. Uh-huh. Farewell. Well. She doesn't recognize me. She says that she's the real Ellen. Look at me. Do you know me? Of course, sir. You and Mr. William Cosgrove. Then how dare you say that this girl is my niece? I see that you regret letting yourself be bought. I don't know about buying. But if you're denying your own niece, maybe you do. Oh. That's enough of that, Nanny. Don't waste your time arguing with these people. We'll have our day in court. My aunt was very good to you. I should think you'd be ashamed. Why, you... Come on in, Inspector. What is all this? What are you up to, Drummond? Ladies and gentlemen, Inspector MacGyver of Scotland Yard. Never mind that. What's going on here? Well, actually, Inspector, I'm not quite sure. Captain Drummond doesn't seem very anxious to tell you, Inspector. I was kidnapped tonight, and he rescued me. And just a moment ago, I was identified as the real Ellen Curtis. Isn't that so, Nanny? That's the truth. The poor child Who are you? Annie Grierson, sir, that worked for Miss Jane Cosgrove for 20 years. I've known this child ever since she was no taller than, than a bobby's hat. And anyone who says she isn't Ellen Curtis is talking through the same. And I'll swear to that. On the grave of the late Samuel Grierson, May his gin soaked soul rest in peace. Did you write this, Nanny? Of course I did, and a good thing too, or you'd never have found me. No, you didn't. You didn't write it because you can't. You can't write, Nanny. That's why you witnessed Jane Cosgrove's will with an X. Who did write it, Nanny? I didn't mean no harm, sir. They said they'd make trouble for me if I didn't... Who wrote it, Nanny? She did. She's not Ellen Curtis, is she? No, sir. That's Ellen Curtis over there. I was supposed to be the goat inspector. They planted a hotel key when she was kidnapped, so that I could find it and rescue her. I was supposed to believe that Cosgrove had hired the men that took her out and help her locate Nanny. Am I going too fast for you? And then I was supposed to pop up in court and tell the world about it. So you finally come to your senses, Captain Drummond. Now, perhaps what you almost did to this girl will cure you of meddling in other people's business. I doubt it. All right, that settles the money, but it's not good enough for me. I want the murderer of Jim Sanderson. 
I should think the inference was fairly obvious, Inspector. Sanderson found out what you've learned here, and... Oh, no, you don't. Certainly, I tried to pass myself off as Ellen Curtis. So had anyone for half of 75,000 pounds. The other half, that was going to Mr. Mason. So he could add it to a little bank account made up of money collected the same way on other cases. That was what Sanderson found out. That's why he was killed. You know I didn't kill Sanderson. You found me in the closet. You saw that I didn't have a gun. Is that true, Drummond? She didn't kill him. If I hadn't known that, you would have had her a long time ago. A shot came from outside. And he fired it. I don't have to stay and listen to this. I would if I were you. Did Mason call you this afternoon, Inspector? He did not. You did ask him to call Scotland Yard and tell them this girl was with me, didn't you? And he said he had. Yes, that's right. That was a very bad mistake. You didn't call because you didn't want the police to get her, because you were on her side. I didn't call because I didn't think it was necessary. Then why did you lie to Miss Curtis? You fooled everybody. You made her come into your office for an interview in front of Sanderson, so you had an alibi and saw in case something went wrong. You made a fool of the real Ellen and her uncle. They thought you represented them, but you really intended to throw the case in court. You even fooled me for a little while, but you didn't fool Sanderson. And Sanderson is dead. Inspector? I... It was easier when Sanderson was sitting at his desk and you could shoot through the window, wasn't it? I say, uh, Inspector, will you give me a lift? I want to get this story to my paper. Uh, I suppose so, Seymour. Where's Drummond? Oh, he's, um, <clears throat> he's occupied. Shall I have him phone you later? No, I don't want him to phone me. I don't want him to phone me ever again. And if he does phone me, I'll have him arrested. I'll have him arrested for, for, for phoning me. Well, Miss Curtis, shall we go? I'll never be able to tell you how grateful I am. Don't try. What are you doing for breakfast? Why, well, have you? You know, there's a little all-night place right here in Fenkirk. It's the quaintest cafe. <laughs>